Yo, what is good YouTube and welcome back to another JC2K video. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about how to get blocks when you need blocks for evos, agendas, whatever the case may be. Basically, the easiest way to get blocks with any specific card in NBA 2K24 My Team. I've gotten a lot of comments recently asking me how to do these block agendas, how to do block evos, things like that. I know Jared Vanderbilt, I think his evo from Ruby to Amethyst requires him to get 10 blocks and then his, his evo from Amethyst to Diamond includes another five i believe so got to get a bunch of blocks with this card and with other cards as well and even though i already have jared vanderbilt fully evoed i'm going to use him as this example because his stats are pretty similar and his badges are pretty similar defensively to where he was when i was trying to evo him and i think it's a good example anyway because that's somebody people are using to try to get a lot of blocks um but before we hop into the video if you haven't already make sure you hit that subscribe button help me push towards the 15,000 subscriber mark on the channel we're about 200 subscribers away trying to hit that by the end of november we got like seven Seven, eight more days so would really appreciate it if y'all do subscribe without further ado let's hop right into it so first things first lineup building is very important in my opinion for blocks challenges the easiest way to do these lineups is to put two gold big men so that they are low overall and likely big men that you're going to match up with against the cpu and then you want to put the player you're trying to get blocks with inside you want that player to be your quote unquote point guard so the shortest of the three players so even if you're using a center use two two gold or as low overall as you have big men who are taller than that player or you could just switch the matchup i guess so you don't have to technically use the tallest player but the goal is that they're your point guard so they're going to guard the opposing team's point guard or shortest player so i would load into this mode with jared vanderbilt and i'm literally what i'm looking for right now is at this lineup screen i'm looking for ideally non-shooting bigs and a short guard who can't dunk the ball is what i'm looking for matchup wise i don't really get it here og and sean can kind of shoot and shosh hart can dunk he's the shortest player i will literally back out and just search again and you can search a couple times until you find the right ideal matchup basically especially in triple threat offline which is the mode that i'm recommending you do this in, and the mode that it's easiest to do this in it, it's super duper simple um to be completely honest and when you get on a higher difficulty it can make these things a little bit harder but here we go we actually have two short guards here who can't dunk Derek fisher and kyrie irving this is exactly what we want hopefully Derek fisher's the actual point guard because he's not as good of a card and it looks like he is offensively doesn't matter when we're trying to get these block agendas done just score so you can win the game so that you get the rewards at the end of it but the way to get the blocks really is basically ideally you match up against a short guard like this and you give them a driving lane and then you jump at them and you will get blocks often if you manually leave the driving lane open for the card and then you rotate over to get the block it will give you the block very often with players with good block ratings good defensive badges that type of stuff bad defensive cards are going to be a lot harder to get blocks with it's just how it is if they have a low block rating and they're not a very good defender they're not going to get very many blocks you can use the same exact strategy and the idea behind it is the same but the actual probability of getting blocks is going to be a lot lower and there's really no cheat code to just magically get blocks with a short player or with a player who is has a low block rating for example benedict matherin i know he's a card that people i've heard a couple people are kind of struggling to get blocks with but that's he has a 37 block and he's like six foot five you're not going to get as many blocks with that card it's just how it is i wish 2k wouldn't give us block evos with cards or block requirements for agendas or evos or whatever it may be for cards that have low block ratings and are short because it makes it tough to get the blocks you really just have to get very lucky with animations and stuff and it's going to make it take a lot longer but at the same time it kind of is what it is and i mean I'm, I'm i'm chunking up these blocks already i've already got two i probably could have a couple more by the end of this game i mean i probably average in block agendas at least with a player who has at least a decent block and decent size somebody like a jared vanderbilt i would average five six seven blocks a game pretty easily and just you win pretty easily it's just about making sure you match up against that short guard because then you're going to get those types of animations they're going to shoot a layup it's going to come from a shorter launch angle or, or launch point i guess as well because they're small and it just allows you to get those chase down blocks and those block animations really really easily and really really consistently which i think is really really crucial i think it's just this is just something that people haven't figured out it's it's pretty simple when you actually think about it you basically just want to match up against a short guard who can't dunk because then they're going to shoot layups and layups are the easiest shot to block but i think people don't really think about that when they're trying to do it and if you match up against a slashing guard or even worse you match up against a team with three wings it's going to be really hard to get consistent blocks if you're matching up against bigs and wings and tall players who are releasing the ball from a high angle and who are more likely to trigger dunk animations which are harder to block and that type of stuff and 
for that reason, this is why I think researching your matchup and doing this in triple thought offline is so easy. It's also easier in a three man mode than a five man mode to isolate a player, get the player that you want to have the ball and then be able to try to manually get them to drive the ball. Cause if you leave, I'll show you an example here in just a second. If I back up too far, you have to be kind of intentional on how you get them to drive the ball. Cause if I back up too far, even, even against a guy like Derek Fisher, probably who I don't think has the highest three point shot tendency, but especially against a Trey Young or a Steph Curry or one of those small guards. If you back up too far against them, they're not going to drive into you. They're going to shoot the ball or they're going to pass the ball. If they don't have a high shot tendency, they're not going to drive to you. So that's why you have to manually basically bait the lane that you're attempting to give up. Um, if that makes sense so that you can try to get them to drive, but you don't want to be too far behind them or too far uh, sitting too low so that they get so that they don't actually drive the ball. Sometimes the CPUs will back cut and they'll throw the back doors and stuff like that. And you're not going to get a million blocks a game by any means, but there you can get a bunch. And honestly, if you're just trying to stack them, just once you get to 20 points, just run out of bounds, give the ball back to the opponent, do it again, let them drive the ball. And same thing, like you just repeat it. Basically, you can extend the game much, much longer, especially when you have a bigger lead and uh, just continue to extend the game and continue to get blocks. If you get a matchup that you like or you're trying to get a lot of blocks in a single game or whatever the case may be, it allows you to extend the game. If you haven't completed the agenda, you're trying to complete or whatever the case may be. I'm actually not having as much success in this game as I generally would with this method, to be completely honest. I think I only have three blocks, but still it's three blocks in like three, four, five minutes. I haven't been in this game very long. And it allows you to get these agendas done real quick. Even if it was, say, 20 blocks, I I'd be done with it in 30, 45 minutes in all likelihood at, at most. Like it's, it makes these agendas so much easier if you have an actual intentional method to how you're going to try to complete them versus trying to do the same thing um, or to trying to basically get lucky in domination or whatever the case may be or whatever. If you have an intentional strategy, it just makes it a lot simpler to get these blocks consistently. We're going to try to get one more right here. I just want to get one more just to showcase again that it works. Let's see if we can get a chase down here. We are not going to get a chase down. Derek Fisher is, is not cooperating right now with me. The animations he's getting just aren't lining up too well. But you know what? I think my point is still proven. We got three blocks pretty easily in that game. Very easily could have had more. So we'll just go finish it out. The other thing about matching up against a short guard is it makes winning the game really easy as well because you can just attack the mismatch of the short guard. So that's another reason that having that short guard in your opponent's triple threat offline lineup is very valuable because it's going to make scoring much easier as well. So in general, very, very simple. Hopefully that makes uh, hopefully that makes a lot of sense to y'all what I just explained and how I showcased it. Uh, and hopefully it makes it a lot easier for y'all to have success getting these block agendas done because honestly, some of them like the Ben Matherin one legitimately are just hard. If a player has a low block rating and you have to get blocks with them, it's just going to be tough. But most block agendas are with players who already have a good block rating and are able to block shots very effectively have good size all that type of stuff and they're really really simple for the most part if you just know what you're doing it doesn't take too long they're honestly pretty easy to complete i don't worry about block agendas unless it is a short player who can't block shots so but that's just me that being said that is all i have to add in today's video maybe we can get an event card right here just as part of the video at the end we do get a nice little beautiful got ourselves a new event card let's go all right that's gonna do it for this video i hope you all did enjoy i hope it helped you all out if it did make sure you hit that like button leave a comment and subscribe i'll be back with more 2k content very very soon and i appreciate y'all peace